Hello everybody, this is part 2 on how to make an RPG or adventure game in Scratch. If you haven't seen part 1 yet, then make sure to check it out in the description below. Anyways, let's get started. So right now, we have a single level and a character with an obstacle. But RPGs have more than one level, and the level switches when the character goes off of the game screen. So let's make that. So let's first create a variable. I'll name it north slash south and create one more called east slash west. So with these variables, when the character goes off screen in the northern direction, then the north-south variable changes by one. And if the character goes off screen in the southern direction, then the north-south variable changes by negative one. And the same goes with the east-west variable. If the character goes east off screen, then it changes by one. And if the character goes west off screen, then it changes by negative one. So to make that, let's go to the character hitbox and grab a one flag clicked and a forever loop. And now we want to see the maximum distance the character can go in all four directions on the screen. So let's move the character to the right. And then let's go to motion and click on the character. As you see in the block right here, this is the character's current X and Y value. And when I try to press the right arrow, then the character can't go any further. So this is going to be the value we're going to use. So since the level can switch, no matter what the character's Y position is, then we only need the X position, because the level will switch as long as the character is over a specific X position, which in this case is 238. So let's go back to our hitbox and grab an if statement, grab a less than operator, Go to motion, and then grab the X position circle right here. And the X position of the character was 238. But since this is greater than, not greater or equal than, we have to subtract 1 to make sure the character goes past the value, which is 238. So let's write 237, and oh yeah, it's supposed to be greater than, sorry. So if X position is greater than 237, then... Let's uh, change the east-west by 1 because it's going east. And let's also make sure that when the character goes to a new level, it appears on the opposite side of the screen, which would be right here. And since this screen here has a total width of 480 units, then it would change x by negative 480. So whenever the character is past this 237 line in the x position, then it changes east-west by 1 and the character goes all the way over here. So anyways, let's do the same thing for the left side. So move the character, we find out the maximum value can go, and click on the character sprite right here, and then it shows the X position. So right here, it's negative 238 for the X position. So let's go to the hitbox, and then grab a if statement, and then grab a less than, so if x position is less than, and then we want to make sure to add 1, so it would be negative 237, so that the character actually triggers the code inside of here. So let's write negative 237, then change east-west by negative 1, because it is going west, and also change x by 480. So this here is essentially the opposite of the if statement right here. So now let's do the same thing for the north and south. So move the character to its maximum value upwards and click the sprite. And as you see here, now we need to look at our Y position. So right here, it says 180. So go back to your hitbox, grab an if statement, and then grab a greater than operator. And this time, grab a Y position. If Y position is greater than 179, make sure to subtract 1, because then the code will actually run if the character is actually over 179. Then go to data, change north-south by 1, and then change y by negative 360. So when the character is past this line right here, then it switches to a new level, and the character appears all the way down here. So now do the same thing for the south. And the Y position is negative 176. 
So now go to your hitbox and then do the same thing if a less than y position. So if y position is less than negative 175, make sure to add 1 and then change north south by negative 1 because it's going south and also change y by 360. So the character appears right here after the level switches. So now that we have this, let's test it out. When the character goes off the screen here, it should appear right over here. So it sort of like warps to the other side. And for the north, it's like this, and south is like this. And the character's not moving downwards. Hmm. All right, base the X and Y values off of the hitbox, not the player itself. So it would actually be 184 minus 1. So it would be 183 for this one. And if you go down, then it would be... Oops, I'll just take this out for right now. Negative 176. So this is okay. So anyways, now that you have this... The character warps around, like so. So now, when the character is supposed to go to a new level, the objects and backgrounds are supposed to change, too. So to do that, let's go to whatever backgrounds we have, grab a forever loop, and grab a switch costume, too. Go to operators, grab a join, and go to data, and grab east-west, put it in the first box, and north-south, put in the second one. Now copy this code over to the rest of the background sprites. So I'll just drag this here and put this right here. So now we have to name it so that it matches the variables right here. So first of all, let's just set the variables east-west and north-south to zero. So the initial stage, when the green flag is clicked, the north-south and east-west variables are all zero. And if the character, let's say, goes to the right of the screen, then east-west changes to 1. And for me, the background changed because I named my costumes of the sprites ahead of time. So the first one, where the player spawns, is 0, 0, right here, because east-west is 0, and then north-south is 0. And if you want to create a new level after the character goes to the right edge of the screen, then make the character go to the right of the screen, and when the level changes, then name it what the variables say. So in this case, this level is supposed to be called 1, 0, because east-west, which is first, is 1, and north-south is 0. So like this. And let's just name it east so that you know the level change to the correct backdrop when the player goes east. And do the same thing for the rest of your background sprites. So in this case, I already have it, 1, 0. Now let's say you want to make a level for when the character goes north. So make the character go north, and right now, north-south is 1, and east-west is 0. And just name your background costumes according to the variables. So go to costumes, create a new one, and change it to 0, 1, because east-west, which is first, is 0, and north-south is 1. So 0, 1, and I'll just make it say north right here. And I'll do the same thing for this costume also. Zero, 1. And now if you see here, when the character goes east, the costume switches to east. And if the character goes north, then the costume switches to north. And now that we have this, let's start our player interactions. So let's say there's an apple tree right here. And when the character goes up to it and you press spacebar, then an apple drops. So let's create a new sprite, and I'll just create an apple tree, like using a circle tool, and making a circle right here. I'll make it a bit bigger, like this. And I'll create the trunk, like this. Put this back, and done. So this is going to be our tree. Now I'll just draw some apples really quickly like this. And using this for the leaves. 
and I'll just group this together and copy these like this. Right, this is a sort of fast and simple apple tree. And now let's go back. After make one more of these, let's go back to scripts and let's position this, let's say right here. So I'll just grab a one flag clicked and then drag this right under here and make this make sure that this is shown when the flag is clicked. Now right now, this apple tree doesn't really do anything. When the character bumps into it, the character doesn't stop. So let's fix that. We only want the character to bump into the trunk because if the character goes here, then it only goes under the leaves. And similar to the house over here, whenever the character touches this costume right here, the character stops. So whatever the character touches in this sprite, then the character stops. So I'm going to drag the tree over here and to match it with the tree sprite. And I'll first change this to vector and then drag this here. And I'll just group this tree again. And I'll match the position with the tree right here. So I'll just move this until it's perfectly aligned like this. And now we only want the trunk to make the player stop. So let's ungroup this. I'll take out the leaves and the apples too. And now since we have the trunk over here, we don't need the trunk over here. It's optional if you keep it, but I'll just delete it. So now, when the character touches the trunk, then it stops. While it doesn't stop if it goes under the leaves. So now there's a problem. If we want the tree to drop an apple if the character is only touching the trunk, then we'll need to separate the trunk into its own sprite so that the action occurs when the player is only touching the trunk. So let's go to costumes and add the trunk back and move this tree right here to this sprite. So I'm going to drag it here and make sure that it matches with the position. And I'll group this again and move this around. So it's right here. And I'll just take out the trunk and take the trunk out of this one too and remove the leaves for this sprite so that it only leaves the trunk. And now what we have here, wait, I'll just first make sure this is in the front. And now what we have here is that this is everything. This sprite is everything that the player will go under but not stop when it touches it, which in this case is the roof and the leaves. This sprite here is everything that the player stops when it glides with it, like the house right here. And this sprite right here will be the thing where the player collides with it and has some special interaction if the key, let's just say the space bar. So right now, let's just make sure the character actually stops when it touches the trunk. So go to the character or the hitbox, let's see, right, yeah, right here. And then grab an or operator and also add a touching sprite 5, which is the trunk sprite. Let's replace all of these. So duplicate this, take this out, duplicate this again, take this out, duplicate this again. So now the player stops when it's touching the trunk. Let's also make the trunk go back 99 layers, or the layer that is the furthest back, so that the player goes over the trunk, like this. And now we have our collision with the trunk. And now we want an apple to fall out of the tree when the character is touching the trunk. So to do that, let's take a forever loop and an if statement, if touching the player, which would be sprite one, this sprite right here, not the hitbox, but this sprite, then let's just say broadcast apple and drag this into here. And if you only want the action to happen once, then just grab a stop all and change this to stop the script. And let's have text to show that the player found an apple, so create a new sprite. And I'll just add some text that is red and say apple found. I'll also shrink this a bit. I'll center it right here. And grab a one flag clicked, then hide. 
because you don't want it to show until the player touches the trunk and presses the spacebar. And go to events when I receive Apple, then show and go to, let's just say right here, and wait one second and then hide. So right now, whenever the player touches the trunk, then this message shows and then hides. However, we also want the space bar to be pressed. So let's go to the character, grab a when flag clicked, and a forever loop. Grab an if statement, if key space is pressed, then let's create a variable, name it space pressed, click OK, and let's first set that to zero, and then if the key space is pressed, then set that to one, and then grab a wait until not key space pressed, then set it to zero after this. Now let's go to our trunk and then grab an and statement, add this in here and grab an equal to statement and put space pressed in here. So if touching sprite one, which is the character and space pressed equals one, then broadcast it. So if we try this right here, then the character is touching it and space is pressed. So it says Apple found. And it only happens once. And if you want it to happen multiple times or like unlimited times, then add a wait until you do not need the stop the script sprite. So take that out and wait until space pressed is equal to zero. So now if we try this, it can happen unlimited times. So like this and then like this, press it again. I'll press space again. And I'll press space again. So it's like that. And since this trunk is part of a level, we also want it to change when the player goes off screen and the level changes. As you see here, the trunk is still there. So the same thing we did with the other costumes, name this one zero zero, and then just add a blank one if you don't know what to do, and name it zero one for when the player goes to east, and one zero when the player goes north. Oh wait, I meant the opposite. One zero when the player goes east and zero one when the player goes north. And now let's grab a when flag clicked, a forever loop, switch costume to join the east west and then north south. And now the trunk also appears or disappears based on if the player is in the correct level. So anyways, that's it for this video. If you liked it, then click the thumbs up and also subscribe to see more videos as I have weekly uploads. Anyways, that's it. See ya.